Thank you very much. Good evening. It's my honor to be here tonight. And let me begin by thanking you for that very moving tribute to my dad. Watching that video, watching that video calls to mind a man whose life was not defined by the tragedies he endured, but rather by the character and convictions he espoused. Forty-five years ago, my dad rose to give his first speech on the floor of the United States Senate. Far from being the lion of the Senate at that time that we all came to know, he was just the junior senator from Massachusetts. Months earlier, his brother, who had once held the Senate seat he now occupied, had his life taken in Dallas, Texas. His brother had left behind a legacy of work undone. My dad's own legacy had yet to be crafted. He rose that day to throw passionate support behind the Civil Rights Act of 1964. He concluded, quote, if my brother's life and death had meaning, it was that we should not hate but rather love one another. We should use our powers not to create conditions of oppression that lead to violence, but conditions of freedom that lead to peace. With that speech, the cornerstone of a legacy was laid. For the next 45 years, my dad would rise again and again to champion the causes to which he was committed. Civil rights, quality, social justice, even when it was unpopular, he still rose because he knew it was the right thing to do. His respect for fellow human beings made him a leader. So many in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community could look to. And when he sought to attach a hate crimes bill to the national defense bill, he was called shameless. But what's more shameful? fighting for the rights of fellow citizens to live without fear of being beaten, taunted, tortured, and possibly killed, or standing by while this happens, remaining silent and afraid. A line was drawn in the sand the day Matthew Shepard was bound to that fence in Laramie. Shame has nothing to do with it. This was an absolute abuse of violation of human rights. And if this country accepts crimes like this to occur without great consequence, horrible histories like this are bound to be repeated. In this country, we protect all, or none of us is safe. As Dr. King said, no one is free until everyone is free. That means we must stand in solidarity. To liberate ourselves, we must work without fear to ensure that everyone stands unchained. Those chains may be metaphorical, but they are no less crippling. Those chains are fear. Those chains are hate. It's time to take them down once and for all and stand shoulder to shoulder without fear, without hate, that is America's promise. What is most fitting about tonight's award and its recipients is how lives can converge, lives that were not limited to the tragedies they endured. Both my family and the Shepherds know the potential for hateful rhetoric to be the catalyst for violent action. Like my dad, it was the loss of a loved one that thrust the shepherds into the national spotlight. The strength of our democracy is predicated on civil disagreement, but there is no place for vitriolic speech, whether the target is the president of the country or a college student in Wyoming.
We must condemn this kind of speech and call it for what it is. Yet even my dad did not face the situation that the shepherds did. My dad was the youngest of four brothers, and tragedy left him as the sole torchbearer for a legacy established by his brothers before him. He had already willingly entered the public sphere, and it was the lessons of his brothers which gave him the strength to proceed. Judy and Dennis Shepard never asked for this role. They never wished for their child to become the symbol of a movement, never wanted him to become the namesake of landmark legislation. But Judy and Dennis Shepard, on the great American tradition of ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things, took the hate and sadness of their unspeakable tragedy and found in it the courage and commitment to speak out. They spoke out so that other families could be spared the pain of losing a loved one to hate. Families like 15-year-old Lawrence King, a gay young man who identified as feminine was shot to death in California classroom, a hate crime. Gwen Arugio, a teenage transgender woman brutally murdered because of it because of four men who targeted her. 25-year-old Sanisha Stewart, a transgendered woman stabbed to death. Angie Zapata of Colorado, a transgender woman beaten to death by her assailant, a hate crime. If we do not make a conscious decision to break this cycle today, then who are we to question these kinds of tragedies when they happen again? Judy and Dennis Shepard's commitment to push for hate crimes legislation has lasted over a decade. Today, their hard work is closer than ever before to coming to fruition. And what a historic night this has been with the President of the United States standing up here and making the commitment to sign not only that legislation, but stand fair and square behind legislation to back civil rights in this country. After the President's speech tonight, I, too, am once again so proud to call myself an American with the President of the United States like Barack Obama as our President. The Matthew Shepard Hate Crimes Prevention Act legislation that originated with my father has been included in the National Defense Authorization Act. This legislation is alive and well on Capitol Hill, and it still has a Kennedy behind it. I am pleased to say that on Thursday I will have cast my vote in support of the Matthew Shepard Hate Crimes Prevention Act for what I'm confident will be the very last time. The message that we'll send will, send will be so amazing. I want to acknowledge as well Tipper Gore, who I've had the good honor of working with for many years. <clears throat> she has been an outspoken leader on the area of mental health parity, which requires that insurance companies not be able to dis discriminate in insurance policies against those like myself with addiction and mental health disorders. And we were able to pass last year the Paul Wellstone Mental Health and Addiction Equity Act, thanks to Tipper Gore and many others in this room. And the reason I say that's so important is because we know the power of stigma 
and what that stigma does to people. And tragically, in the gay and lesbian, transgender and bisexual community, this stigma has led to an ever-increasing suicide rate amongst our young people. And so having that mental health parity pass and having that equal coverage extend to young people in this country for whom suicide is the third leading cause of death is such an important piece of legislation. I want to thank Tipper Gore again for her help in that area. And I want to say that what Judy and Dennis Shepard have done is the same thing, and that is to reduce the amount of stigma associated with growing up with a different sexual orientation than is accepted in the common day society's mores. They have grown up saying that that is something that everybody should find comfort in knowing that they have found their truth in life and that they can be comfortable living in their truth and being comfortable loving who they want to love. And I respect the fact that their foundation, whose mission is replace hate with understanding, compassion, and acceptance, has done so much more than just advocate for changes in legislation. It has worked to combat the stigma and also provide that assurance to all those growing up that they are important and that they show a certain solidarity with others in this country and are not isolated. And so while I'm honored tonight to be able to present the first ever Edward M. Kennedy National Leadership Award to Judy and Dennis for all the work that they've done, as Mr. Shepard so eloquently said during the trial, we will never know what Matthew would have become or how he would have made our world a better place. But in the depths of evil, good has prevailed. Mr. Shepard, Matthew has made our world a better place. In recognition of their tremendous contribution to human rights, I'd like to invite Dennis and Judy to the stage in joining me to watch a tribute to them. <laughs> 